everybody, welcome back to TCS Start Frogs. My name is Travis and today I'm going to be doing a quick care video on springtails. Now you might be wondering why you'd want to keep these tiny little bugs. Uh, they're actually great feeders for small frogs and other small reptiles and amphibians. So I'm just going to go over how I keep them and what's worked for me and what hasn't worked for me. So let's get started. All right. So I keep my springtails in large plastic containers, um, similar to like a shoebox container. I don't provide any ventilation, and for my substrate, I use natural hardwood charcoal. And I usually break that up into smaller pieces, because uh, sometimes in the bag you'll get like these giant pieces of charcoal, and you don't really need those. Um, the more surface area you can have in there, the better. Uh, that way they've got more space to run around and more areas to breed. So I feel that the smaller the pieces of charcoal, um, maybe not the smaller, like say around you know a couple inches each, that's a lot better than you know a five, six inch piece of charcoal. So that's what I use for my substrate. And in the past, I have used other things like just some uh, vivarium substrate that I mixed up. I've used coconut core, which is kind of like the little cubes of coconut. Um, and I've also used uh, coconut fiber, but when I used all the different coconut products and vivarium substrates, I noticed that over time they would mold and get fungus, and I would also have problems with mites overrunning my colonies. Since I've switched to charcoal, I've noticed a lot better production with the springtails, and so far I haven't had any mite infestations or any problems with uh, mold or funguses. So I think overall charcoal, in my opinion, is the best substrate. and. Um, it's pretty simple, you just you know break up some charcoal, put it in a plastic tub, put some water in there with it. Um, you want the water to maybe be half an inch. Um, you can make it higher depending on how high your charcoal is. I usually put a pretty thin um, layer of charcoal in the tub and then you just add your springtails in there and once they've been in there for you know a couple days you can start feeding them. I use the same food that I feed to my isopods for my springtails and I'll leave a link for um, the video where I got that. It's actually from David Birkbeck's channel and it's a pretty easy food to make. It's a little bit time consuming to make and if you guys don't want to go through all the hassle of making it, I do sell it on my website. So if you want to check that out, I'll link my website in the description as well. and. That's pretty much it. Um, once your cultures get uh, going pretty well, you'll want to start feeding them every couple days. And you also want to open up the lids and vent your culture every couple days. It's pretty important that they get good oxygen exchange because once you're feeding them every couple days, all that uh, organic matter is going to break down into CO2 and it can actually suffocate the springtails if you don't uh, give them enough oxygen, so making sure to open those up every two to three days is really important. That way you can keep your springtails alive. So when I feed my springtails, I like to just take a small spoonful of the springtail food and give a light dusting to the entire culture. That way um, it's just a little thin layer of food spread across uh, most of the culture. And the finer the powder, if you make the food, uh, the better it's going to work for feeding the springtails. Obviously they're really small, so the smaller the food, um, the better they're going to be able to eat it. Although as it gets wet, as it hits the uh, moist charcoal in the culture, it's also going to start to break down, which will make it easier for them to eat. So that's basically how I feed them. So another thing that I forgot to mention is that springtails make a great cleanup crew for terrariums and vivariums. So if you have animals in your vivarium or a terrarium, uh, the springtails will probably get eaten uh, unless you have a lot of leaf litter and substrate um, that's pretty thick so that they can have a lot of hiding and breeding spaces. But if you have a terrarium or a vivarium that doesn't have anything living in it, um, springtails are great to help clean up any decaying leaf matter or any mold or uh, different things like that that might occur in there. So they're not just great for feeding uh, baby frogs or you know, other reptiles and amphibians. You can also use them as a good little uh, cleaner bug for small jar terrariums and things like that. So, um, 
Another thing also is if you're just starting your springtail culture, uh, you definitely want to let them breed for a while before you start feeding out of it. Um, you want to at least wait until you start seeing baby springtails. Um, you'll be able to tell there's a significant size difference between the babies and the adults. So once you start seeing babies, you can start feeding the adults out. But if you do that um, before you start seeing babies, then you'll kind of feed them all out before they breed very well and you'll kind of have your culture crash. And as far as harvesting the springtails, there's two different methods that people use. Uh, you can either fill up the whole culture with water and pour off some of the springtails. Because they're hydrophobic, they'll float on top of the water. Um, I don't really prefer that method because then when you go to feed them out, you're pouring extra water into your uh, frog tank or whatever animal you're feeding. Um, the other method that you can use is to take something like a little plastic cup um, or some sort of container and just take one of the pieces of ch charcoal and either shake it off into the cup or uh, blow the springtails off into the cup and then you've got springtails without the water and that makes it a little bit easier to feed them. And with the second method you can also add a vitamin and calcium supplement to the springtails. That way if you're feeding really tiny froglets they're getting um, more nutrition than just the springtail itself. They're also getting some extra uh, vitamins and minerals. So that's pretty much it for my springtail video. Alright, thanks for tuning in today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead and give it a like and please subscribe. Thank you for all the people who have subscribed already. I appreciate the support. And if you guys have any questions or comments or suggestions for future videos, please let me know in the comments down below. And I've also got a coupon code for you guys. It's 10% off anything on my website. And the code is FROG10. So if you guys want to try out that springtail food or any of the other things on my website, including frogs, um, I will leave that code in the description as well. It's FROG10. And I appreciate you guys' support. And thanks for watching. You guys have a great day.